Hello everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because today is my February TBR and lots of exciting things happening in February. It's of course in the month of Valentine's Day which makes everyone want a little romance in their life. <laughs> and I of course am buying into the Valentine's Day thing for February because like let's be honest like it's cold and there's really nothing else that happens in that month so hearts and candy hearts is kind of just what keeps me going <laughs> um so this month I'm going to be participating in Fat Row Feb please check them out on Instagram if you have not yet I've been chosen as one of the representatives for that event and I'm so so excited it's really cool especially because I've been really getting into fantasy romance lately like this book here is kind of here is kind of what started it all off and I've just been looking into different fantasy romance authors and books and so if you are looking to get more into the fantasy romance genre this is an absolutely perfect event for you please go check out their Instagram because they have like tons of authors that are involved in this event and it's really cool um, I've been really excited to be part of this and now I'm going to be posting my TBR there is two different TBR prompt boards that you can do so I've chosen this one and I'll be fitting my books into here not every single book is going to be a fantasy romance just because i do have some books that i need to read like arcs and stuff like that but i'm still fitting them into the prompt but the majority are going to be fantasy romance not all of them are adult fantasy romance either some of them are ya so like i would consider them more like fantasy romances but not like as steamy as the adult ones essentially um, and i am going to be doubling up some of these books for the different prompts just because uh, I don't want to overwhelm myself too much and then I have one extra book at the end that I want to get to and that is not romance really at all so I'm kind of keeping that one separate but without further ado let's get into it so the first prompt is low fantasy otherwise known as like urban fantasy a fantasy that takes place in this world you can find tons of great paranormal romances but because I need to read this arc that I was sent by Bloomsbury Publishing I'm going to be fitting this one into this prompt so this book is none other than phoenix flame which is the sequel to haven fall which i read last year and adored and so i'm so excited to be reading this book it comes out march 2nd so i definitely need to tackle this one in february so i have my review out before it comes out the first one was just really cool it was a very nice blend of modern day and like a fantasy setting so it definitely is more urban so Maddie Morrow has always gone to the inn at Havenfall her whole life. Her uncle runs this inn and it is basically the magical crossroads between our realm and others. Havenfall is known as the neutral zone between many powerful and ancient realms. Maddie has been destined to take up the role of innkeeper where she looks over this magical place and keeps the peace. When one summer an impossible thing happens at the inn and a dead body is found, her best friend goes missing, her uncle is gravely injured and there is a creature on the loose. Maddie must step into this power before she is ready to save Havenfall and the world that hinge on it or else everything is doomed. I just adored it. I just thought it was such a cool like contemporary fantasy and I'm really interested to see like where this journey is going to go in this book because it kind of ended like super crazy. What I really appreciate about this series as well is that our main character is bi and there's a love triangle between her and a girl and her boy so that's really fun to see especially in a YA contemporary fantasy um, where the seeing those kinds of love triangle dynamics are less common so we love to see it so yeah just I can't wait to get to this one um, again thank you to Bloomsbury for sending this to me because I'm high so the next prompt is a Faro Feb author and you can see on their Instagram they have four weeks of authors that will be featured and one of the authors is of course none other than Jennifer L Armentrout and I am continuing on my series where I'm reading all of her books so I will kind of be carving out a week to read one of these series and that is the White Hot Kiss series so White Hot Kiss, Stone Cold Touch and Every Last Breath. I hope to read all three of these in like a week and I of course will be doing a, a vlog for that as well. I still haven't published my Lux vlog even though been talking about it for months i literally filmed it in october but it is coming trust me it's coming and i think this year i'm gonna try and tackle like one jla series a month because i just adore her as an author i have most of her books here yeah maybe i'll i'll probably read like this series i think is a spin-off of this series and the third one is out in like july so i'll read I'll, like binge this series and the third one of this just came out but they changed the covers mm. um and then i need to finish off the last 
two, three in the Lux series. So that will be another vlog. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that because I love Miss JLA and I love reading her backlist. And there are some books that I have on Kindle as well that I'll probably try and get to. So hopefully I'll be able to have like at least one JLA vlog a month for the next few months. And like I actually am solidly planning on having those out in a reasonable time frame. <laughs> but like my life just kind of got like off track in November, December. I don't know. Anyways, okay. That's a side note. So for this prompt, a yes, Miss Jeffrey L. Armstrong is participating in Pharaoh Feb. She mostly writes like fantasy romances, I want to say. This one is YA, so it's definitely not going to be like as steamy as <laughs> from Blood Nash, but I think it's going to be a fun time. And this one sounds really cool. It's called the Dark Elements series. So Layla just wants to be normal, fit in at school, typical teenager things. Trouble is Layla is not normal. And her longtime crush, Zane, treats her like a little sister. She's half demon, half gargoyle. And thus she is cursed that her kiss will kill anything with a soul. Zane is a warden, part of the race of gargoyles, tasked with hunting demons and keeping humanity safe. Thus, Layla's kiss will kill him. Enter Roth, a smart mouth demon who claims to know Layla's deepest and darkest secrets. And though Layla knows she should stay away, it's kind of hard when the whole like soul thing isn't really an issue. So trusting Roth could brand her as a traitor to her warden family, as well as destroy her relationship with Zane. But with a violent demon uprising, looming in the distance, kissing the enemy suddenly seems like the least of her problems. So yeah, I'm hopefully going to get to all three of these. I just like will devour anything Jennifer L. Trout writes because she's one of my favorite authors. She's amazing. Okay, so that covers that prompt. The next prompt is has your favorite trope. And for this one, I am going to go with the Bridge Kingdom. Daniel L. Jensen. I've been wanting to read this ever since I bought it. Um, and my favorite trope is of course, enemies to lovers. And this is just sounds like enemies to lovers goodness. Lara is a princess who has been trained her whole life to be a spy. And thus her father sends her to wed the king of their enemy kingdom. She is expected to find his and exploit his weaknesses and report back to her father. But when she is there in the bridge kingdom, she finds that her new husband is less evil than she thought he was. And thus she begins to question where the true evil really resides. And as her mission drives her deeper into the politics of this kingdom, she finds a simmering attraction between her and Eren that is almost impossible to ignore. So her goal nearly within reach, Laura will have to decide her own fate. Will she be the destroyer of a king or the savior of her people? I mean, I love this cover. I also love the digital cover as well. Just the art is fantastic. Like the whole like marriage, it's an arranged marriage. Like the guy thinks it's a marriage of convenience, but she's really there to like spy on him and take his kingdom down from the inside. <sighs> like that just sounds like it's just for me, and I one time got a comment on one of my videos of maybe it was my fantasy romance video where someone literally said that they reread this book three times and they read it every time in a day. And I've literally never heard someone do that. So that to me means that this must be a spectacular book. And if you were that person, like shout out to you because that's amazing. The next prompt is Love Triangle. And for that, I'm going to be reading Queen of Empire by H.R. Moore, which is number one in the Relic Trilogy. And H.R. Moore is actually one of the authors that is mainly involved with creating Pharaoh Feb. So thank you to H.R. Moore for putting together this wonderful event and also for sending me a copy of this book. I'm really excited to read it. So Anita has been special her entire life. She has the ability to sense the energy of others. And not only that, but she has won every physical challenge that she's ever entered. So when the powerful, good-looking descendants of Marcus and Alexander come to town, she immediately grabs their attention and keeps it. Once in Empire, the sudden death of the ruling body descendant sets into motion a number of events. And powerful factions form within the ruling elite. A trusted friend reaches out for Anita's help, and she has to make a choice. Help her friend and betray those that she loves, or do nothing and let everyone starve. I mean, this just sounds like some love triangle goodness fun. Um, I'm really drawn in by the summary, and I just like love this cover too, because I feel like she's a badass. She's like gonna step on some people, and it's gonna be great. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And of course, I have to read this in Favreau Feb since H.R. Moore has been doing so much work for this event. I feel like I just gotta, you know, pay it back by reading her lovely book. I am also going to be using this book for the prompt of indie author. For a new release, I'm going to be reading none other than A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. Like, 
did you think I would get through February without reading this one? No, I'm going to read it the moment it arrives on my doorstep. I already pre-ordered it from Barnes & Noble, so I don't think it will get here, like, the day of. But as soon as that baby arrives to me, it is all I will be reading. And it's, she's, like, 700 pages. I can't wait. I can't wait. So, Nesta. I would advise skipping over this summary if you haven't read the Akotar series and you are interested in reading it because the summary in of itself does give spoilers for the first series. So yes, you do need to read all the other Akotar books before you read this one. Nesta has never really recovered ever since being thrown into the cauldron and becoming a high fae. She is having a really, really difficult time dealing with the post-traumatic stress, essentially, that she faced from the war with Hybern. Um, and she seems to have taken this like especially to heart. And so we've kind of seen at the end of A Court of Frost and Starlight that she's essentially like throwing her life away and has a drinking problem and it just has all these sort of very poor coping mechanisms. So she is sent away to the Illyria Mountains and there she is with Cassian who will help train her as one of the Illyrians. That's like not even in the official description. I'm just like assuming that from the end of A Court of Frost and Starlight. And no one ignites her anger like Cassian does, but that's not the only type of spark that flies, especially when they're in, in close quarters. You know what that means. You know what that means. <laughs> Meanwhile, the treacherous human queens have formed a new alliance that could threaten the fragile peace that has formed after the war with Hybern. And thus Nesta and Cassian must battle demons within and without. I mean, it's Nesta, she is just one prickly bitch. And I feel like after doing my reread of the series for the Aquatar Long, I really have a different appreciation for her character. Um, I'm really interested to see where her character arc will go. She is just like not the typical female character. She's so intense and has a lot of hidden depths to her and I don't think like her earlier behavior is excusable but I think it's so interesting to explore her dynamic especially I don't know like there's just so much that I can say about her and we are going to have a whole live show discussion I think we're going to do it about a month after this book comes out so mid-march um please be on the lookout for that I've been really enjoying doing the Aquatar along and I cannot wait to discuss this new book with everyone because I know I'm just going to have so many thoughts and I'm just so excited for this this is definitely one of my most anticipated books of the entire year. And I'm also counting this book for the prompt of epic fantasy. The last book on my TBR for Pharaoh Feb is going to be Blood and Honey by Shelby Marin. And this is the sequel to Serpent and Dove, which I read in 2019 and loved. And I'm actually rereading this via audio right now to prepare to read this one. Um, and this is like a YA fantasy romance. And this is going to be used for the prompt, love the cover, because I mean, do you see this beautiful gorgeousness? She's so pretty. Just like the snake. The snake's out of the game. And the third book is called Gods and Monsters. It doesn't have a cover yet, but I'm pretty sure this was originally supposed to be a duology and it got extended into a trilogy, so I'm interested to see how this middle book reads. But yeah, so I've actually been rereading this one on audio. I actually really am enjoying the audiobook so far. The French accents are pretty good, which is important. And we have two different narrators, one for Lou and one for Reed. Okay, let me read you the tagline because it is really cool. A witch and a witch hunter bound in holy matrimony. There was only one way such a story could end, a stake and a match. So Lou has fled her coven and found shelter in the city of Cesarine, and she's forsaking all magic and basically living off whatever she could steal. In the city of Cesarine, witches are hunted and they are burned, and they are hunted by those known as Chessers. Reed is the captain of the Chessers, and he has lived his life by one principle, thou shall not suffer the witches to live. His path was never meant to cross with Luz, and yet a wicked stunt forces them into an impossible union. Holy matrimony. So yes, it's a marriage trope. Thus, Lou is forced into marriage with her greatest enemy. However, Lou is unable to deny her growing feelings for Reed, and yet she is powerless to change what she is. And so a choice must be made. So in this gorgeous sequel, and I believe in this one we get to see more of La Dame Rouge. Rouge, which are the red witches, whereas Lou is a white witch. La Dame Blanche. La Dame Blanche. French is like really hard to pronounce. <laughs> Anyways, 
so I'm really excited to get to see more of like the different types of witches and different types of magic in this world as well as there were some little things that happened at the end of the first book that have me very excited to pick up this book. So yeah, once I finish my reread of Serpent and Dove on audio, it will probably take me a little bit because I go through audiobooks pretty slowly. So this last book is the book that I'm going to read after Serpent and Dove on audio. And I will say that I have been using Scribd for my audiobooks. There are a few different apps um, that I've used in the past, but I really do enjoy Scribd. Um, I do have a link down below. If you use it to sign up, you get the first 60 days free if you want to try to try the service out. Yeah, I mean, I've been using them for like over a year and I just really enjoy them. So check it out if you're interested in using them for audiobooks. I think you can also get some ebooks too. And if you're into music, you can get a lot of sheet music on there, which is pretty cool. I do want to get a piano at some point in the future to continue practicing. Not that I've ever taken piano lessons. I just kind of know how to play and I kind of want to learn how to play a little bit more, but that's a complete tangent. Anyways, this last book on my TBR is None Other Than Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. And I read The Hate You Gave on audio in 2019 and it was just an incredible experience. This book is so important and I'm really interested to see how we are going to delve into the backstory of Mav and this follows Mav when he is 17 years old and as we kind of know from The Hate You Gave, Mav was deeply involved in the gangs and then he kind of went the straight and narrow path um, after his son was born. And so this follows the story of him falling in love and finding out that he's going to be a father and kind of the responsibility that he takes on during this and trying to get out of the gang life. So I think it's going to be just an incredible and powerful read and I can't wait to read it. I just think it's going to be absolutely amazing. So with that, that's all I have today. Please let me know what you are going to be reading it down below in the comments. Let me know if you're going to be joining in Pharaoh Feb because I just think it's going to be such a fun time. Um, just leave a little heart emoji if you watched to this point in the video, you know, for Valentine's Day. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.